Hello, this is Josh Patel back again with another biology video. Today we will be doing chapter 8 which is from DNA to protein. So we will be going through the steps of how DNA transforms into protein. So we'll start with 8.1 which is identifying DNA as the genetic material. DNA was identified as the genetic material through a series of experiments. This lesson isn't that important, all it does is talk about scientists and how they figured out how DNA became the genetic material or they figured out how or why it was the genetic material and they also figured out that it was universal through all animals and it leads to chap to lesson two which talks about how DNA is similar or what it is basically so DNA is composed of four types of nucleotides DNA is made up of long chains of nucleotides, and each nucleotide has three parts, a phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogen-containing base. So this is our general structure of a nucleotide, and we have to learn all the parts and how to label one. So the first sphere is the phosphate group, and the, it's, the pentagon is always in the middle, and it's always going to be your deoxyribose sugar. And the part containing two pieces is always the nitrogen containing base and it'll always be like this in the same order. So the nitrogen containing bases are the only difference in the four types of nucleotides we need to know about in DNA. So these are the four nucleotides and the first one is thymine, cytosine, adenine, and guanine. And they divide nucleotides into pyrimidines and purines. Pyrimidines have single rings, so thymine and cytosine, they both have one circle, and purines are double rings, they both have two. We need to be able to categorize these and label them. Watson and Crick determined the three-dimensional structure of DNA by building models. So they realized DNA is a double helix that is made up of sugar phosphate backbone on the outside with base on the inside. So Watson and Crick's discovery built on the work of Rosalind Franklin and Erwin Chagas. Franklin's x-ray image suggested that DNA was a double helix of even width. Chagas' rule stated that A pairs up with C and C pairs up with G and A, T, C, and G are the four nucleotides we learned about earlier. And so Watson and Crick actually were thought of discovering the double helix shape, but it was actually Franklin, but they deserved, well, they got all the credit because they were men and she was a female. Nucleotides always pair in the same way. So the base pairing rule shows how nucleotides always pair up, which was A to T and C to G. A kind of easy way to remember is C and G both have the curved sides. So they always pair up together. Because a pyrimidine, a single ring, pairs with a purine, double ring, the helix always has a uniform width. So it's saying that the purines pair with the pyrimidine. So in this chart, adenine pairs with thymine, and thymine's a single ring or pyr pyr um, pyrimidine, while adenine is a purine. So that's why they pair up, and that's why guanine and cytosine pair up. So the backbone is connected by covalent bonds. So we're talking about the structure of DNA and the bases are connected by hydrogen bonds. So this is the backbone and the bond between the bonds in this are covalent while the bonds here are hyd hydrogen bonds and we have to know this. And if you already took chemistry, you would know covalent bonds are bonds between nonmetals, but we don't need to know that in biology and hydrogen bonds are just an attractive force between two atoms. And if we look here, this looks exactly like the nucleotide we saw earlier. We have the phosphate group, the sugar, and the nitrogen base. So now we're on 8.3, DNA replication. So this is the first actual step in form from forming DNA to protein. So DNA replication copies the genetic information of a cell, exactly like it sounds. 
Replication copies the genetic information. A single strand of DNA serves as a template for a new strand. The rules of base pairing direct replication. DNA is replicated during the S or synthesis stage of the cell cycle, and each body cell gets a complete set of identical DNA. So this is our cell cycle here. We have gap one, which is just a growth phase, and then we have synthesis, which we're going to be talking about now, and then we have gap two, which is another growth phase, and then we have mitosis or meiosis, depending on what cell it is. So in synthesis, that's the stage where the DNA duplicates and prepares for mitosis and meiosis. So proteins carry out the process of replication. DNA serves only as a template. Enzymes and other proteins do the actual work of replication. So DNA doesn't replicate itself, it's replicated by enzymes, proteins, and nucleotides. So enzymes unzip the double helix. Then you get free floating nucleotides that form hydrogen bonds with the template strand. So first we get an enzyme that unzips it, so we have two separate strands of the double helix form. And nucleotides, these T-shaped molecules, come out from the cell cytoplasm and attach to the DNA. And they form with the conjoining nucleotides. So C forms with C forms with G and A forms with C, and that's the same with the nucleotides. So if like one part, let's say, let's pick this part here, this purple rod, let's say that's a C, then this yellow one would have to be a G in the nucleotide, I mean in the other form of DNA, other strand. DNA polymers and enzymes bond the nucleotides together from the double helix. Polymers and enzymes form covalent bonds between nucleotides in the new strand. So this is a diagram showing how this happens. So here we have the DNA polymers and these nucleotides form in this one area and they get their covalent bonds form here so it's kind of permanent now. So then at the end we eventually get two new DNAs one with a new strand, as we see the orange one, and they also have one old strand, which is the blue one. So two new molecules of DNA are formed, each with a original strand and a newly formed strand. That's really good to know because they ask many questions about that. DNA replication is semi-conservative. That's not that important. So the main idea of this page is that there's an original and a new strand in each set of DNA, and we get two new molecules. Replication is fast and accurate, which is really helpful. DNA replication starts at many points in a eukaryotic chromosome. So this shows a strand of DNA, and it's just showing that there's multiple starting points. It's not just one big onset. It happens in multiple areas. So DNA polymers can find and correct errors. So if any error occurs in the replication, it can be easily corrected. Now we're going to do lesson 8.4 which is transcription. This is the second step in the way DNA transforms to proteins. So transcription converts a gene into a single strand RNA molecule. RNA is similar to DNA but we'll learn the difference. RNA carries DNA's instructions. So the central dogma states that information flows in one direction from DNA to RNA to proteins. So to get the DNA to proteins is what we're looking for. We have to have the, ch the link between, which is RNA. So we have DNA, and then RNA takes the information from the DNA to make proteins. And this, the DNA and RNA happen inside the nucleus of the cell, but proteins are made in the cytoplasm, so the outside of this, like the main body of the cell. And it also starts with replication, which we just already learned about, where it copies its DNA, and then transcription, what we're going to learn about now, and then we get translation, which turns the RNA to proteins. And so transcription and translation are similar words, but we have to know the certain order. And an easy way to know it is they both have trans, so we can eliminate that part. And the C encryption comes before the L in lation. So transcription must come before translation. 
So we have replication, transcription, translation, and RNA is the missing link between DNA and protein. RNA differs from DNA in three major ways. RNA has a ribose trigger, RNA has a uracil instead of thymine, and RNA is a single-stranded structure, unlike DNA, which is has two strands because it's a double helix. So transcription makes three types of RNA. D, um, transcription copies DNA to make a strand of RNA. Transcription is, a, is catalyzed by RNA polymerases. RNA polymerases and other proteins form a transcription complex. The transcription complex recognizes the start of a gene and unwinds a segment of it. So here we have the starting site, and then the complex, the complex unwinds or unzips it, and we have nucleotides that form and come in and fill in their spot in their coordinating spot, like A with T, but since this is RNA, T is actually a U. Well, I meant A with T. So since we have no T in RNA, the T becomes a U. And so sometimes you'll get a worksheet where you have to copy down the DNA when it replicates and then the RNA when it transcribes. And one thing to remember is that T and RNA is actually U. So you can go in and write T, but you have to remember at the end to turn it back into U. So these nucleotides form bonds with the DNA. Well, they don't form bonds with the DNA, but they form bonds with each other to make a chain like the DNA, but they only make one, there's only one strand. So nucleotides pair with one strand of the DNA. RNA polymers are bonds the nucleotides together and the DNA helix winds again as the genetic information is transcribed. So here we have our RNA, tra RNA strand, and as we see, it's in the corresponding locations, and once it's done, the DNA rezips, and the RNA polymers that moves along and goes to its spot to make proteins. The RNA strand detaches from the DNA once the gene is transcribed, as we see it leaving here. Transcription makes three types of RNA, messenger RNA, mRNA, which carries the message that will be translated from, the pro from a protein. So this is rRNA, I mean mRNA. And then we have ribosomal RNA, which is rRNA, which forms part of ribosomes where proteins are made. And then we have tRNA, which is transfer RNA which brings amino acids from the cytoplasm to a ribosome. And tRNA and rRNA will be more, impor part more important in the next lesson, which, would, which is translation. So the transcription process is similar to replication. Transcription and replication both involve complex enzymes and complementary base pairings. The two processes have different end results though. In replication, we get DNA at the end, and transcription, we get genes, or we copy genes. So replication makes one copy, while transcription makes, or replication makes two copies, while transcription makes one. So that's it for this part of chapter eight. And in the next part, we will be doing the last pieces of how DNA turns to proteins, which would be translation. And this is very complex, so I'm gonna make it a separate video. Make sure you watch it though, because it's very close to these other ones and you don't wanna get confused.